Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. With uh, Matt Espenson and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Take uh, your thoughts and comments today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to double t 973com or the mobile app presented by Happy State Bank. Jamie's out today. He's uh, He's got his one last little breath uh, of relaxation before... Tech baseball gets underway next week. It'll be uh, Gonzaga coming to town. All four games, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the wraparound on Monday uh, are day games. Uh, The first three are 1 o'clock games. And, of course, uh, you'll hear Tech baseball uh, right here on Double T 97.3 and occasionally on 100.7 The Score. Uh, Blake writes in this morning, says, I usually wake up at 4.30 to 4.45 to get ready for work. I just woke up 10 minutes ago. Let's hope it gets a little better today. Man, if you're, uh, you're running a little bit behind, you know, it's just uh, it's kind of one of those deals. And hey, and, and in today's world, I mean, if you're a relatively good employee and relatively above average, uh, as hard as it is to get people to come to work, they'll, they'll probably forgive you a little bit for being late to work. Right, Matt? It's a... It's acceptable. It's acceptable. It's, it's acceptable. So we could be late to work? No, we no. cannot. No. We cannot. Right. Long... Nobody should be late to work. Let's make no, this no, very but clear. I mean, occasionally, <laughs> but they're not going to fire him for being late to work once. Sure. But that doesn't mean everybody gets to be late today. It's like we wouldn't. if Choice and, and Hacks aren't ready to go, we've got to stay on the air right. on another radio station. Right, right. right. We, can, we can carry the water just for a little bit. You know, it's, no, it's okay. It's all right. You no, know, it's not. It's not taxing. It's not back backbreaking or anything like that. It might be taxing to the audience, but it's not. This is tax, all I'm saying. Taxing to us, you know. Um. So what what surprised you the most last night? The uh, Oklahoma and Texas leaving the Big Twelve. Uh, Mahomes being named uh, the MVP, or Zach Thomas uh, being elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I don't think any of those really su- surprised me. I, I, looking at the Hall of Fame every year, you can always make the case for for everybody that got snubbed, and I, I think that's you know uh, Devin Hessner. I, I know a lot of you know as I was watching last night and trying to keep up with everything, Patrick Willis kept coming up, but for me, I mean, Patrick Mahomes deserved the MVP. Mm-hmm. Zach Thomas deserved to go. Um, so I, I guess to your answer, it'd be the the Texas and OU leaving. But it's always for me, like I said, out of the big thing last night was the the snubs. I think I can always make a case for everybody that got snubbed. You know, Devin Hester is the one that I, I definitely think deserves to get in. I mean, that watching him play in the NFL and, and seeing, you know, it was <coughs> teams had to strategize not to kick to a guy his whole career. Um, so. Yeah, just just seeing the seeing the snubs is always something that I'm like, oh, I can't believe he he didn't get in. I guess the guy that uh, that surprised me getting in last night um, was uh, Rondé Barber. Yeah, that that one that one surprised me a little bit. Um, Jeff, what surprised you the most last night of the three? Mahomes being MVP, Zach getting in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, or Texas and Oklahoma uh, announcing. The Big 12 did that that they were exiting. Getting announced last night was Texas be, having it announced uh-huh. last night. Not them necessarily leaving, but the fact that it came last night was a little surprising. Yeah. I've been banging on the drum for Zach Thomas to get in the Pro Football Hall of Fame for three years now. And understood last year when he didn't get in, when you looked at the guys who did, that they kind of went, okay, who are the five guys who have been waiting the longest last year? And that's kind of the guys they took. And if that was the concept, they wanted to actually be able to honor those guys in person while they were still alive. I can see the argument. Those guys deserve to be in. There's never a question about the guys that get into the Hall of Fame being Hall of Famers for the NFL. But they needed to get it right this year, and they did. I wasn't surprised. Yeah. No, Um, I I, I think the thing for me... And 48 out of 50 first-place votes for Patrick Mahomes... I. Yeah, that shouldn't have been a shock to anybody. No, I'm. I'm just curious. I'm. I'm get, I, I have not seen the the voting. Did uh, Jalen Hurts get the other two first place votes? Jalen Jalen Hurts got one, and then Josh Allen got one. Josh Allen yeah. got one. Okay, my my guess is uh, that was uh, probably the folks that represent the, those two teams. 
Um, I, I think for me, uh, even though um, a week ago Wednesday, uh, and I and I still thought it was going to get done, but I was surprised at the news of uh, Oklahoma and Texas leaving the Big Twelve uh, a year early. Uh, not not surprised that it happened, but it's surprised that it was announced last night because two things happened last week. One uh, was we had uh, Kirby Hocutt on our halftime show from uh, Stillwater last Wednesday, a week ago Wednesday, and the last question I asked him was, uh, would you be surprised if Oklahoma and Texas were still part of the Big 12 in 2024? And he surprised me with his answer because usually Kirby holds, holds his cards pretty close to the vest, and that's and that's fine. It's not like he's he's never dishonest. He might be just you know going to hold his cards to the vest a little bit. He said, and he said, very surprised. He said he would be very surprised if Oklahoma and Texas were still part of the Big Twelve in twenty twenty four. Well, right after that, like the next day, and I believed that those that that story that came out after he said that, uh, I believe that that story was old and his information was new because what was coming out the next day or so was that talks between the Big 12 and Oklahoma and Texas were dead and uh, that it wasn't looking like that they were going to be able to to exit. Well, that obviously that was not the case. And I felt like what we were hearing from uh, from Kirby was that um, was basically fresher information than what was coming out of the of, a, of the reports. So uh, obviously, it um, it turned out really good. Uh, Brett Yormark, the commissioner of the Big Twelve, said, "I've as I've consistently stated, the conference would only agree to an early withdrawal if it was in our best interest for Oklahoma and Texas to depart prior to June 30th, 2025. By reaching this agreement, we are now able to accelerate our new beginning as a 12-team league." and move forward in earnest with our initiatives and future planning, i.e. expansion. So now, does this put the Pac-12 on even more notice of, hey, Washington, Utah, your your, your suspects, uh, Oregon, uh, Arizona, Arizona State, who all comes to the Big 12, and and then how much additional money can you get from your TV partners? Because obviously it makes no sense to bring in somebody. And, And if you brought in Oregon and Washington, your TV pie would increase. Uh, substantially, um, and with the Pac-12 basically struggling to get a new TV deal and struggling to get what they even have now and struggling to get something over the air, uh, it's going to make those teams even more vulnerable than than they were yesterday. So I, I would imagine that the Pac-12 is on big-time notice, either A, try to get a new TV deal done, uh, bring in some new partners, which who's left, like San Diego State and SMU, like who cares, and uh, – and, and the fact that, that a majority of their games are going to be streamed, even though it's all the buzz, uh, at the end of the day, people like easy access and over the air and cable is, uh, is easier access. Um, and, and for coaches and recruiting, uh, it's the better way to go. So I'm not dismissing it, not saying it's not going to be a part of it, but when over half your deal might be, or games might be streamed, that's alarming when you're uh, uh, a a big time Power Five conference, yeah, and and not not everybody does the the streaming gig yet. There's still a lot of cable that goes on. Yeah, so that, no, no that question. TV I mean, deal and is, that's, is and monstrous, and 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 that's where the big time dollars are from an advertising standpoint and a sponsorship standpoint. So, um, you know, it's uh, it was uh, it was good. It's, I, I again, I hate it, and uh, Bullfighter says to me. Um, I do agree with you, Chuck, that them leaving is bad for the college football rivalry, but I can't wait to not have to deal with the snobbery that is Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah, no, I I get it. I understand. But that's part of what makes these rivalries so special is the the mutual hate for each other um, and the satisfaction you get when you beat them. Um, And you'll have to develop new rivalries, which take time with, you know, Central Florida and Cincinnati and BYU. Houston, we already dislike. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. If today is February the 10th, 2023, with this day in sports history, here is Jeff McGuire. I'm going to start in 1920, because baseball outlaws all pitches 
involving tampering with the ball. Hmm. <laughs> they, they, they send that memo out every year, too. Well, yeah, that's kind of like the uh, memo we get from the production department uh, around December 15th or so saying make sure that any dates that go into the next year, you change the year numbers. So yeah, right. It's the same memo every year, but, you know, it's helpful to get. 1961, <coughs> the AFL's L.A. Chargers moved to San Diego. 1968, American two-time world champion Peggy Fleming comfortably wins the Olympic women's figure skating gold medal at the Chernobyl Winter Games. A Where? Uh, G-R-E, uh, G-R-E-N-O-B-L-E, Chernobyl Winter Games. Okay. Yeah. Wherever they were in 68. We'll be yeah. Yeah. I wasn't there. I want, to say, I want to say that was Switzerland, but I may be wrong about that. Uh, a year later in 69, LSU's Pete Maravich scores 66 points despite losing to Tulane 101 to 94. France is where Chernobyl is. Ah, there we go. 1989, Celtic KC Jones and Cavalier Lenny Wilkins are elected to the NBA Hall of Fame. 1997, O.J. Simpson's jury reached decision of $25 million in punitive damages. And in 2008, in the NFL Pro Bowl in Honolulu, Hawaii, NFC beats the AFC 42-30. to Your MVP was Adrian Peterson, Minnesota Vikings running back. It is National Cream Cheese Brownie Day. Out. Because of the cream cheese? Yep. Okay. Matt. Yeah, I'd be out. I'd try it. It's a brownie. I'm in. I would not try it. It's also just National Have a Brownie Day. So, I'm in. You know, I'm in. They're, my favorite dessert of all time is the hot fudge brownie sundae. How about you the, get ice cream and the brownie. How about the blonde brownie? Do you Are you a fan of the blonde? I'm a fan of... Uh, show me a brownie. I will show you a happy person. <laughs> We're talking the food. The food. <laughs> Although she's got Girl Scout cookies. I'm a happy person there, too. Uh, happy birthday tomorrow. Tony Batie, 47. Mm -hmm. Ronald Ross, 40. Okay. And then Sunday, a guy getting ready to start his Major League first full season, Josh Young, turns 25. Today, we've talked about Zach Thomas. We've talked about, we haven't talked about Dak Prescott yet. With regards to winning the Walter Payton Man of the Year, but another former Cowboy, Daryl Johnson, fifty-seven today. Hmm. Elizabeth Banks, forty-nine. Laura Dern, she's the female scientist from Jurassic Park. She's fifty-six. Robert Wagner, ninety-three. Sterling Shepard, thirty. Josh Rosen, twenty-six. Orlando San uh, Sandrick, thirty-six. Ty Law, forty-nine. Lance Berkman, forty-seven. And Lenny Dykstra is sixty today. And on this day in 1962, in Germany, American spy, uh, spy pilot Francis Gary Powers is released by the Soviets in exchange for Soviet Colonel Rudolf Adel, a senior KGB spy who was caught in the United States five years earlier. The two men were brought to separate sides of the Glenacher Bridge, which connects East and West Berlin across Lake Wannesey. As the spies waited, negotiators talked in the center of the bridge were at a white line dividing east from west. Finally, Powers and Abel were a way forward and crossed the border into freedom at the exact same moment at 8.52 a.m. Berlin time. And that is this day in sports history. And then uh, on this day, uh, February the 10th, 1923, Texas Tech University was established and, um, and originally called Texas Technological College until 1969. Okay, and that's when it was changed to Texas Tech University. And University Avenue, at, at that point in time, was changed from College Avenue. It was College Avenue for uh, a long period of time, and then it was changed to University Avenue. So uh, the, the history and uh, getting to Lubbock and uh, <clears throat> establishing Texas Tech was uh, obviously a very long process, but uh, has proved to be uh, obviously fruitful over for our community. <clears throat> that August, um, 
of uh, February, I guess of uh, on February 10th, 2023, uh, the legislation was signed creating Texas Technological School. And in July of that year, a committee began searching for a site. When the committee members visited Lubbock, they were overwhelmed to find citizens lining the street to show support for hosting the institution. That August, Lubbock was chosen on the first ballot over other area towns, including Floydata, Plainview, Big Spring, and Sweetwater. So good for those citizens, those fine citizens that came out to line the streets to uh, put Lubbock over the top uh, compared to those other communities. Because uh, if uh, I think if Texas Tech had not been chosen to be here it might uh, we would look uh, substantially different than what we look today so good on them so if your uh, ancestors were among the gatherings then good on them uh, so if you have a thought comment this morning on the happenings or the uh, birthday of texas tech celebrating uh, hit us up on the h flooring center chat line go to double dot 973com for that on the mobile app benchmark hotline is open as well and uh, on the eve of that, the, the history that was made uh, yesterday by uh, two famous uh, former student athletes of Texas Tech, Zach Thomas getting elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame and Patrick Mahomes being named the NFL MVP, 48 of 50 ballots is what he was uh, named. He'll be a most certain uh, first ballot MVP. I think he's, or excuse me, Hall of Famer, right? I mean, that's solidified now. Right? Two-time MVP, Super Bowl champion, all that he's already accomplished. If something happened today and he were done, he's first ballot. I don't know. He loses on Sunday. That's more Super Bowl losses than wins. He becomes, you know, just another guy, right? Well, he becomes, in in, in essence... um, I mean, there's quarterbacks who've got one Super Bowl win out there that aren't in the Hall of Fame. He becomes Kurt Warner because Kurt Warner lost two Super Bowls, won one, and was a two-time MVP. Yeah, I mean, it's just... I, I could see them keeping him out. You know, you're stirring that pot, aren't you? No. No, they're not keeping him out. Yeah. I think I, I think, was this close, Matt. I was yeah. this close to being able to hit Arms of an Angel with Chuck complaining about it. I was this close. Arms of Angel. Uh, yeah, this uh, from King Craig. Can you imagine Texas Tech being in Floyd Data? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's the thing. If Texas Tech wasn't in Lubbock, Floyd Ada would be Lubbock. Like, with regards to that's where the population would be. Oh, yeah, no question. Uh, same thing for Big Spring or uh, those other schools, uh, those other cities that were uh, that were named. Uh, College Station Red Raider says this, I still have a Texas Technological College spiral notebook. How about that? That's pretty cool. That's neat. Yeah. I'm sure plenty of people have... Uh, some Texas Technological College uh, uh, gear or stuff like that. Did they have a flat double T then? No. Maybe so. Are you a are you a flat double T or are you a much like uh, ice cream and brownies? There's no bad double There's T. There's no bad double T. Okay, <laughs> it's a solid answer. <laughs> It's a solid... Uh, I like the 3D version. I like mm-hmm. the flat. I like the old school. Whichever way. It, it's a double T. I'm in. I don't have to pick. I like them all. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Uh, I was I was here in town uh, living here when, when that was developed. And, uh, you know, there was... Uh, there was some controversy with that. I don't, know, I don't know that there was just absolute outrage with the new double T. I think for the most part, folks signed off on it. Um, certainly the, the old timers and the... Folks that have been here for quite some time were probably eh, I'm not so sure about that thing. And it seems like as we've progressed more over the last 30 years, uh, more people have kind of gone back and embracing that uh, that flat double T, the original double T, in, in addition to what Jeff calls the uh, 3D double T. So, you know, that's uh, both are good, and I agree. There's no uh, there's no bad. Double T. All right, it's 6.55 this morning here on the morning drive. We'll talk basketball next. Uh, Red Raiders, Lady Raiders in action tomorrow. They take on the Kansas schools. KU for the women, K-State for the men's. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction.
Thanks for uh, being with us this morning here on the Morning Drive. Matt's in for Jamie. Jeff's here. I'm Chuck. Pleasure to uh, talk to you today and be with you. Yates Flooring Center chat line is open. We get this advice. You all should take a peek outside of the east. West Texas is the best Texas. I did take a, I did peek, take a peek out. The uh, Civic Center is in the way of my view right now. So it looks like it's going to be a good sunrise. Um, and we, we usually get a pretty good one, but... Looks like um, looks like the Civic Center is just a little bit in the way of things right now. So let me post that. But uh, if you have a good one, that would uh, that'd be you know, great if you'd post that on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, this, come on, Chuck, they use different chickens for layers and fryers. Where did you go to school? The Big Blue Chicken? Um, didn't know that, that they had different kinds of chickens for layers and fryers. Did you know that, Matt? No, okay. no I was reading that in- Learn something new. Let's, you know, learn something, learn something new. Chris says it's really a feed shortage, and the young birds that aren't culled aren't going to be layers more likely, more than likely anyway. Okay. Uh, with regard to the first Super Bowl, Super Bowl twenty for me, the Bears. Yep, that was uh, that was a good one uh, with the uh, Chicago Bears defeating the New England Patriots. By the way, in that game. All right, uh, Texas Tech and uh, Kansas State t- tomorrow. Red Raiders uh, looking to uh, to get a victory over K State. They uh, they pose plenty of problems, uh, especially with Keontae Johnson. He averages eighteen a game. Marquise Noel at almost seventeen a game, and then uh, one other in double figures. Uh, K State uh, comes in the ranked uh, number twelve in the country. They're nineteen and five, seven and four in the conference. They're three and four away from home, though. Uh, they have lost twice in their last three times. And they've lost the last three times on the road, albeit uh, playing at Kansas, uh, losing there to ninety to seventy-eight, uh, at Iowa State, losing there eighty to seventy-six, and then losing at TCU in mid-January eighty-two to sixty-eight. They do come off of a win over TCU eighty-two to sixty-one. So uh, they come in, uh, you know, with a little bit of a spark probably, and looking for their twentieth uh, win of the season. It's impressive what they've done under Jerome Tang in his first year. Yeah, yeah, they've they've definitely uh, came out playing good ball. And then you know, just just looking at the last game, it was really just a tell of two halves. You know, the the first half Texas Tech outscored them thirty three to twenty eight, and then the second half had to come, which was uh, forty to twenty five in KSU's favor. Yeah, and then uh, so they win the they win the ball game. And that was uh, January the twenty first. Uh, for Texas Tech in that game, uh, Kevin O'Banner had only nine. Uh, Amac did play in that game. He's not going to play tomorrow. Pop Isaacs had 13. He's not going to play tomorrow, I would imagine. And then Davion Harmon had uh, had 13 in that game. Uh, you got just six out of Daniel Bacho and just 58 points. I mean, you're not going to win very many Big 12 games when you get 58 points. And they shot five of 12 from the free throw line while K-State was 20 and 27. So that's, that's tomorrow. We'll have it at five, tip at six uh, on double T 97.3. And again, it's a, uh, it's a sold-out game. So if you have a, a comment or a thought on that, uh, hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. I will be interested to see what the what the fight is of this team, what the spirit of this team is, and uh, can they can they knock off uh, Kansas State? Can they get a couple more wins? They, they turn right around and then play Texas on Monday. And, man, what a difference the feeling is going into that game today versus a year ago. <laughs> feels like there's nothing going into that game. Um, a lot of that's because of – 99% of that's your season. And then, of course, the, the fact that Chris Beard is no longer the coach there uh, takes some of the, the spark out of that um, situation. And, and even though it's still Texas, you still want to beat them uh, with the way that your season has gone. Uh, it's, it's hard to even say that a win over Texas would salvage it. But, you know, it's never, it's never not a bad thing to, to beat them. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Texas Tech on the women's side – We'll uh, take on Kansas tomorrow. Uh, a couple of players to watch out for is Akia Franklin. She averages almost 15 a game. And Holly Kurzgeter, she averages 14 a game. Um, but she's she has been a problem for Texas Tech. Uh, and they have others as well. Kansas comes in. Uh, losers, three of their last five, although they did de- defeat TCU 73-55. Uh, I, I think I would say that they would probably tell you at this point in time at 15 and 7 and 5 and 6 in the conference that they would be 
disappointed with that. Uh, they have um, losses to Baylor and Texas on the road at Texas, at Iowa State, at Baylor, and then at home against Texas. So you, you could make the case, well, they played some of the top teams in the conference. They've already played Texas twice. They've already played Baylor twice. Um, they have played Iowa State once. Um, so maybe they would say, maybe they wouldn't necessarily say that, but I think they had a little bit higher expectations. They made the tournament last year for the first time since 2013. Lady Raiders trying to make a tournament for the first time since 2013. So they've been on the same kind of course. They've been through some coaches as well, although the current coach um, has been there for a period of time, and he hails from this area and and um, certainly has been you know, um, better for them than, than, uh, than the previous folks. But at any rate, we'll have uh, Texas Tech Lady Raider basketball for you on the air tomorrow at 1.30, the tip at 2. As far as the, the Tech women are concerned, I, I, like I said, I, I mean, I've, I still think they have a chance of making the NCAA tournament. They're going to have to win um, here at the end, uh, probably another four games. Um, but I think it's been it's been an enjoyable season so far to watch this uh, this Lady Raider team play, Matt. Yep, it, it's been ups ups and downs. You know, I think um, I think for, for me the thing that's um, that stood out more than anything else is that they've been uh, competitive, um, uh, especially in Big Twelve play. Uh, I think what we saw the other night, uh, we saw a team that um, that fought back um, that in in recent years probably would have lost by 20 or more. And while you never want to say, well, it's a moral victory, but uh, anytime you're playing Texas, um, uh, you certainly want to win that game. They had a chance to sweep Texas for the first time since 2013. Did not. Uh, the Tech women have now lost four of their last five, have the win over K-State at home last Sunday. Um, and then before that, they had, had beaten Texas and uh, Kansas State in back-to-back games. So the <clears throat> second time you've played uh, KU and uh, lost to them earlier this year, 77-59. to Bree Scott's having a <clears throat> terrific uh, Big 12 conference. She leads the conference in scoring at 21.6 a game. Uh, Jazz Shavers, who did not score against Texas, did not play in the second half, has a dinged-up shoulder. Hopefully she's able to play tomorrow against KU because – She's had a really good uh, conference portion of the season, averaging 12 a game. And then Bryn Gerlich, her three-point shot has uh, been terrific over the last couple of games, last three games, actually. Uh, she's now at averaging at uh, 11 points a game. And so for, uh, for Bryn, obviously her senior year and trying to go out with um, a tournament appearance, whether it's the WNIT or the, NIT or the NCAA tournament. So the women are 4-7 and seven in the conference. And they're uh, 16 and 8 overall, and they're assured of at least a winning season, which will be their first winning season since the COVID year of 2020. And they did not get uh, to the NCAA tournament, obviously, because there wasn't one, or the NIT, their season ended like everybody else's at the Big 12 uh, conference before it really even started. So we'll see. We'll see what's going on there. Uh, this from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Always been told layers go into the fast food chain when they stop laying. Uh, think about that for a second when you eat the chicken nuggets, okay? <laughs> uh, are you expecting the Civic Center to move over soon? No, I'm expecting the sun to move above the Civic Center. That's what I'm expecting at some point in time. But right now it's blocking our view of a sunrise. I mean, technically, you're wrong twice. The sun isn't moving. The earth is rotating. Therefore, the Civic Center okay. is actually going to be moving out of the way. For the okay. Sun. Okay. I mean, when you actually think about it for a sure, second. Sure. That, that makes sense. <laughs> we are rotating around the sun while we are spinning. Yeah. So, yes, the Civic Center will move. Yes, the Civic Center will move. So, uh, Comparatively speaking. Yeah. You had to get up pretty early to have that in your back of your brain. Four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at 724. Oh, I didn't say I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. just said I was up at 4. Uh, Paul wants to know what's on the grill for the weekend. Uh, I don't know. I haven't uh, haven't gotten to that stage yet. I'm still thinking about that, if I'm going to smoke something or not. We'll, uh, we'll have to see. I have uh, Super Bowl Sunday on Sunday, number 57, Chiefs and the Eagles. We'll have it for you on 100.7 The Score and here on Double T 97.3. 
Basketball tonight, basketball tomorrow, football on Sunday. Could you have it any better? 725, there's a question on deck. We'll do that next here this morning on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. All right. uh, Jamie is out today. He'll be back on uh, Monday. And uh, Matt has got the question for you, for me, and for Jeff McGuire. Fire away. All right. So keeping it with the football Super Bowl kind of weekend. Has Patrick Mahomes had the best start to a professional sports career? Wow, I'd like to know who would be ahead of him. I mean, I think I think the answer to that is yes, because uh, you know here we are. He's, he's drafted in 2017, basically sits for a year. In his first year as a starter, he's the MVP. Second year as a starter, he wins the M- the Super Bowl. Third year as a starter, he takes the team to a Super Bowl. His fifth year as, as as a member of the league, he's an MVP, taking his team to the Super Bowl. Three Super Bowls in five years. It's 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 hard to argue. Again, I'd like to know <clears throat> who you would replace him with. I'm trying to think of a of a recent professional athlete, um, even Major League Baseball or um, a guy that comes to mind is Mike Trout. I don't have his specific kind of numbers in my head, but I mean he he had an awfully good start, but he he didn't win any championships. He's got one. He was on that Angels team that won with uh, Sosha in was that was his rookie year, I think. I think he's got one title. I'm gonna double check. I'm gonna double check you on that. Um, first name I thought of was Derek Jeter. Okay. I don't, I don't know that that's the right answer because I'd, I'd have to go back and look at his rookie year and how the Yankees did because I they had success, but it was a little bit after he got up. The second name I thought of uh, beats Patrick, and I hate to say that, but it's a sport that doesn't matter as much. So you can make the argument because the NFL matters more that this gets trumped, but Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the mm-hmm. when you look at what, as good as Patrick Mahomes is, when we ask who the greatest football player of all time is, it's not Patrick Mahomes yet. It was very early on in Wayne Gretzky's career where that was his the answer was Wayne Gretzky and that was the end of the conversation. Yeah. So no because of Wayne Gretzky, but yes because it, the NFL is more important than Patrick Mahomes. Yep. yep. Trout, Trout was not on that Angel team. And when I was when I was looking at this question, I was really I started looking up the first five years of the the Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes and seeing where they stood out. And then I started, you know, kind of looking at some of the other people that I would possibly put in there. And really there were there was there was one that I think that could go and again to, to Jeff's point, it's not uh it's it's probably because of the NFL's popularity, but Tiger Woods when he started, he he won. I, I lost count of the the tournaments. He won two Masters pretty early in his career. Um, he jumped up to the number one world rankings within his first five years on the tour. So that would be somebody that would that had a fast start to a very successful career. And then, kind of going back a little farther, was again not not as popular of the sport, but Mike Tyson. Jumped up really fast when mm-hmm. he became professional in 1985. He ended up, you know, become a world champ. His first year, he fought 15 fights in one year. Boxers nowadays fight once, maybe twice a year. And as a professional, he he fought 15 in a course, 15 and 0 in his first year. So those are just two of the names that stood out. But I, I definitely think that Patrick Mahomes had the fastest and and probably the most successful start to a to a sports career that you could you could write i'm just gonna uh take people for uh for fact here without quickly fact checking uh this tom brady had three super bowl wins in his first five years yep um somebody says this the great one best nickname in sports uh hard to believe that you could come up with a better one than that i agree 
Uh, he wasn't the first one to have the nickname the Great One, though. Uh, that goes back to uh, to others. Uh, Trout does, definitely does not have a ring. You know, uh, Bobby Hot Dogs. Trout has been to more Eagle playoff <laughs> games than Angel playoff games. You know. Um, okay, I'm not familiar with James Gray, who they say has two MVPs by age 22. Is that a hockey guy? I'm not familiar with James Gray. Yeah, so I, I don't know who this person is talking about. So I may be, I may yeah. be embarrassed here by by saying that here in about five minutes. Um, somebody else had said um, a couple of minutes ago. Only correct answer is Tiger Woods. LOL. <laughs> I mean, and the problem with Woods and um, Mike Tyson is that their off course or off ring behavior supersedes what they did sometimes inside the ring. Yeah, or, the, or on the golf course, as um, their careers got a little farther. Yes, they they you know the the off course or off field actions. Um, uh, yeah. This, to your point, Tiger took a sport that many people could care less about and make people pay attention without question. I mean, his numbers uh, when he plays uh, spike uh, dramatically in terms of eyeballs watching golf. And I think his uh, influence in the beginning was much bigger in context. Jim Gray. Okay. Jim Gray. I like this texture. Josh Young, fingers crossed. (laughs) I like that answer. That might be my favorite answer to the group today. Jim Brown. Oh, okay. Jim Brown. Okay. Dan. Now, now it makes sense. I was like, and we, we all have those, you know, brain moments where we're like, okay, we can see the person and things like that. Yeah. Jim Brown. I mean, and he is, he is before my time. Um, By the time that, you know, Jim Brown, was done playing football. It was it was in, in 1965. I mean, he walked away uh, relatively young. He was uh, inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1971. Uh, played at Syracuse. Played for Cleveland. Um, so basically, he was done before the Super Bowl era. So when you think about Super Bowl era players, which basically starts with the 1966 season through present day. Jim Brown was not part of that. I'm not saying he's not a significant player or anything along those lines. It's just he's he's beyond a lot of people's lifetime in terms of eyeballs and things like that. I'm 62, and so I go back to Super Bowl three. So you know, if you got to be probably mid 60s, you probably got to be 70 plus before you would really remember seeing uh, Jim Brown for something other than being in the movies and the Dirty Dozen and running and dropping grenades. Yep. Down, uh, you know, down a you know, th- uh, light to uh, blow up the Germans. So uh, somebody says this. I thought it was couldn't care less, right? Couldn't care less. Right? Well, no, in okay. the text it was written could care less. You could read care it less. directly off the yeah. text. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And right. text doesn't always get all the correct letters yeah. in there as we've yeah. seen in the past. So, so good question. Uh, I mean, he's right there. Uh, he, he's, um, you know, if if. You're bringing up Wayne Gretzky. You're bringing up uh, Mike Trout, who I think doesn't make the list because of the doesn't have the championships. You know, Tiger, Tyson, uh, and are we are we missing out on anybody from the NBA? I mean, you've got Bird, you've got Magic. Those, Jordan had a heart uh, a hot start, but it took a little bit to get the championships going. Yeah, it, it, exactly because the the knock on him was they. They didn't really win a they did not he did not win a playoff series until 1988. So he was a number of years into his uh NBA career there was the there was the question of it wasn't I guess it was if very, it was, it was more very win. reminiscent of Patrick Mahomes here where yes. the Bulls didn't have the wins but yes. it wasn't because Jordan wasn't playing well. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, it's not like he was missing, you know, um Shots at the buzzer or things like that. The te- just didn't have a very good team, and until Phil Jackson took over for the um, for the Bulls, I mean, I think they won one playoff series with with Doug Collins with with Bills with um, with uh, Jordan. Uh, somebody brings up Miguel Corbera, okay, but you, 
He's never been the face of the league. Yeah, right. And all of these other guys have been the face of right. whatever sport they were playing. Yeah, that's a really good point. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. When Zach pulled that off, and uh, good uh, good for him on being uh, elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And named that way last night. Good morning with uh, Jamie Lynn out. Matt Estrenson is in. Jeff McGuire is here as well. I'm Chuck Hines. Pleasure to have you with us from the First United Bank Double T 97.3 studio here in downtown Lubbock. Benchmark hotline is open. The Yates Flooring Center chat line is open. We'll uh, take it for you here today. We'll have uh, high school hoops tonight, 730, the broadcast time. For Lubbock Cooper and Abilene Cooper, they'll tip it off as well at that time. Same thing from the Tiger Pit Friendship in San Angelo Central. That is a 7.30 tip. Tomorrow over at the United Supermarkets Arena, it's a doubleheader of basketball. Both teams in town and playing on a Saturday in town. <laughs> Crazy. Hasn't uh, happened at all in the Big 12 this year. It's happened very rarely uh, to be playing at home on a Saturday. So that'll be fun. Uh, Lady Raiders take on Kansas, 1.30 on 1077 Yes FM and 100.7 the score. They take on Kansas, a team that's beaten them uh, this season already. And a team that's beaten the Red Raiders uh, will be in town as well. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, Texas Tech losing to K State at Bramlage. We'll have it for you at 5, the tip just after 6 o'clock uh, tomorrow night. Supposed to be a sold out show. Uh, I think I've Rick, asked. Go ahead. Give me a 30 because you're going to want to hear this. Just saw this. Okay. So there's no such thing as a bad, bad flyover, right? Well, the one for the Super Bowl is going to be even better. Oh, yeah? One of the people involved, former Texas Tech Red Raider. Awesome. Uh, current U.S. Navy Lieutenant Ariel Ash, I believe is how her na- uh, first name is, Okay, will be among the three Navy Tactical Squadron fly- flying over State Farm Stadium for this year's Super Bowl. All are women that I think are flying over, doing the flyover. Uh, so that's, that's really cool. Yep. Uh, Matt, just so you know. Uh, Jamie doesn't necessarily always share this uh, joy with with Jeff and I, but we are huge flan- fans of the flyover. Okay. Ice cream brownies flyovers. There's yeah. no such thing as a bad. Yeah, we we <laughs> <laughs> we are we are huge fans of the of the flyover. Uh, will you uh, will you time the national anthem to see uh, what the uh, what the time is for the singer? I do it at basketball games, too. You do it at basketball Yeah, games? it's a uh, standard operating procedure. Okay. If I'm there, and it's because I know how fast it should be sung. Uh-huh. And the fact that, no offense to some of the people who have done it, and I'm not going to mention anybody's specific, but if I can sing it twice before you finish it once, one of us went too slow. So let me ask you this. I'm, I'm just going to guess. I don't know this to, for a fact, even though we've, we've talked together like this uh, for a number of years. I'm going to guess that anything over two minutes is foul for you. Unless your name is Whitney Houston, <laughs> Adele. I mean, I can go Aretha Franklin. Okay. Uh, Ray Charles. Mm-hmm. I'll give you 45 minutes. Y'all just go. Marvin Gaye. You Marvin, give, I will let Marvin Gaye sing to his heart content. Maybe one of the... I think Marvin Gaye. Little Sister Susie. All-Star Game. Um, Let's go. National Anthem. In the '70s, was better than Whitney's uh, because Marvin Gaye's wasn't lip synced, and Whitney Houston's was lip synced. So you can talk all you want about Whitney Houston and her version of the national anthem, blah 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 blah. It was great, it was awesome, but it was lip synced. You're going to do those things. You got to do it live. That's fair, but again, her talent still. I, if she wanted to take 30 minutes, mm-hmm. I will give her 30 minutes to continue performing. Little Susie, no. We I got a basketball game to get to. Let's go. Hey, we had that. It's funny you say that because we had that at the Moody Center the other night. I mean, this gal. I I, I started. I looked at. We were playing um, an interview that I had done with uh, Coach Pearson for our scouting report, and um, I think that I looked down, and uh, she was already a long ways into it. And that was another minute, minute and a half. Uh, I got to think Tuesday's national anthem in Austin took two and a half minutes. Easy. And then that gal stretched it out uh, with, without, uh, without question. Uh, we get this. Uh, the guy that's singing it, Chris Stapleton, uh, according to this, will push uh, 
two minutes. Yeah, he's he's a low and slow guy. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have this low hanging fruit question from Josh. Ideal cut of the brownie: center, edge, corner. Jeff's going to say yes. Watch this. There's no bad brownie. <laughs> if you, I have, don't know how I can make this any more clear. Uh, I take the edge, like the the crust part. I'm I'm kind of with I'm kind of with Jeff. I'm not I, now the cinnamon roll. I like the center. Okay. My brother and I kind of fight for that. We fight for the, we fight for the center. It's a good thing that Chuck and I aren't that I don't cook cinnamon rolls for Chuck, because when I know somebody's like that, I take the center and replace it with one of the edge pieces and put one of the edge pieces in the center to see if they notice the difference. See if they notice the difference. Yeah. No one has ever noticed the difference. No one's ever noticed the difference. Okay. Okay. Well, at any rate, uh, if you have a thought or a opinion on that. Uh, hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. I was a junior in high school and was at that game, rushed the field, and Byron Hansbard preached to the crowd. Okay. <clears throat> this, I see Zach Thomas is number five all time at tech and career tackles with 390. He's also currently number five in the NFL in career tackles with 1,107. Every Red Raider fan is excited for Zach, who was told he was too small for the National Football League. Guns up. Yeah. Yeah. No, no question. Um, this from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Most of you would have to <coughs> Google Zach McPherson. Yeah. He's a member of the Philadelphia Eagles and played for Texas Tech. He'll play in a Super Bowl against uh, Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Clay says this, and this is true. The greatest thing about Mahomes is, is that he's a good person and hasn't forgotten where he came from and the support he had at Texas Tech. Yeah, there's no no question about that. No question about that. Uh, this, if the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, where does it put Andy Reid on the all-time coaching list? Well, he he becomes a, a rarity uh, in that and I don't... He becomes a rarity because uh, he, he has two Super Bowl wins. Um, he's already a guy that's coached two different teams to a Super Bowl. Um, nobody has coached two different teams to a Super Bowl win. It's been it's it's very rare in baseball too. Sparky Anderson did it for the Detroit Tigers and Cincinnati Reds. There have been other managers that have taken Tony Larusa. Tony Larusa did it he, with the A's and the Cardinals. Would would he be two and one if he won Sunday? Is that He'd correct? be two and two. Two and two. He lost yeah. one lost with, with the Eagles. Eagles. Lost yeah. one with the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd put Reed five or six on the list, if not further back. You still got guys like Vince Lombardi ahead of him. You've got Tom Landry ahead of him. You've got uh, Bill Parcells. I would still take ahead of him. Don Shula. I think I might take him over Don Shula. You would? He had a, a, okay. an extremely long career and a successful one. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Is but- Jimmy Johnson above or below? Johnson's below. Below. He didn't have a long enough career. D- yeah. Right, just because of time. Right, no, no question. I agree with that. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.